goes on to exploratory experiment on fixed lift in cleaning and in friction. Uh, I assist on the world exploratory because the experiment were not complete. And the story is not uh, complete also. The fixed lift in cleaning is very well known in the everyday experience. This afternoon I have proved this uh, adhesive tape. Unfortunately, I have not six feet with it. And uh, I put it in the freezer and to reduce the, velocity, the critical velocity. And I can say that uh, at 5.30 it was working. <laughs> it is, now it is warm. But this is something you have the correct characteristic noise of thick slip motion during the And as the frequency of this oscillation depends on the pilot lines, we have decided to study the pilot of an uh, adhesive tape here with a coupon filter motor which imposes a velocity capital V, and uh, we can choose the line capital L of the field plan. When the motion is uh, regular, with capital sixty, the, the angle of feeling is uh, 90 degrees, and uh, the kinetic energy of the of the unwilling uh, bond the UK, one half of I, omega, and the power two. And uh, if delta is the elongation of the band due to the field, the, the field force, the velocity uh, of feeling is related to the velocity capital V imposed by V, uh, small v equals capital V minus the uh, variation of the d delta on dt, the variation of the elongation. In a regular motion, this term is zero and the two velocities are the same. And at uh, 90 degrees, the strain energy release rate is summed by P on D, where P is the, uh, uh, the width of the pilot band. Here are the results we have obtained. Here is G versus the, uh, the velocity in log of plot. What is G again? G is the strain energy release rate. Uh, a quantity used in fractal mechanics. And you, uh, we have observed the first branch. Uh, with regular peeling and after 60 apples here at a velocity of about uh, 6 centimeters per, per second and uh, the amplitude of the fixed lift of the ocean cell is very large and uh, when the impulse velocity increased the amplitude of oscillation decreased until we arrive to the second positive branch and the G velocity increased very uh, rapidly. Uh, we have explored the velocity until uh, 18 meters by, uh, per second. Uh, analysis tape at this velocity is unwound in uh, two seconds. So we have consumed a large number of uh, to explain the, the results we have observed, uh, the first mod very simple model is the model of relaxation oscillation. We have two positive branch, resistance branch, separated by a branch with a negative resistance. And it is impossible to fix the velocity in the branch. 
due to the inertia of the roller, the pin angle changes constantly. However, the results are interesting. In this case, you have G equals to P and B. And the variation of the elongation this time is given by the difference in the velocity imposed on the velocity of the crack at the pilot point. And uh, we have to include now the kinetic energy of the system. That is G, the uh, energy which can be released, is used uh, against the, the losses, the scholastic losses, uh, and also in the, the kinetic energy of the roller. So we have this equation. This, this equation, the uh, variation of the acceleration, is a function of g minus t of v of v. And we have a second relation which relates the, the pin force to the elongation of the bulb, which carries the stiffness of the bulb. And by derivating this expression, we have the g dot is a function of v minus w, the minus capital V. And uh, we used the parameter small m, what is the inertia by air times squares. And we, when we combine the two equations, we have this equation related the, as the v dot dot. There is a, an error, v dot and v. And uh, now uh, I introduce the pulsation omega, which is the, the square root of G on uh, A. And the parameter of mu is the width of the square root of A. And uh, I change just the origin of the axis. As I can put the mean velocity V, I will take the two axis x, which is v minus capital V, and y, which is y minus g minus t of capital V. And uh, uh, I write f the f of x at x, which is phi of v minus t of capital V, and f, small f, is the derivative. That is the slope of the phi of v curve. And uh, with this new variable, we obtain this very simple equation, which is, which is in fact a uh, linear equation, a characteristic of self suspend oscillation. Uh, this equation is uh, equivalent to the autonomous system x point and y point as a function of x and y and the uh, y point function of y, capital Y of x and y. This equation describes the, the motion in the space phase x, y. That is the motion in the space phase here. And it is well known that the uh, linear equation has uh, a solution limit cycles. That is, the, the, these two equations describe the orbit in the, this space phase x and y. So I represent here the experimental result, the curve g of v. This is phi of y, the losses, with the negative branch and the second positive branch here with these two new axes. And the slope of the orbits in this space phase are given by this expression. That is, the y axis here is a zero degree isotime. That is, the orbits are perpendicular here to the axis. And the curve, the curve y 
the solution is very classical. 
multiply the, the radius of the two limit stickers, the stable one and the unstable one, as a function of the parameter of S. And what would you follow when S increases, that is, when the, the, the slope increases and then decreases? You follow this stable point here and until you are, you are at the top of the curve. At the, this point, you have immediately oscillation with a large amplitude and uh, the which increase when the, the slope decreases. And when you return, that is decreasing the impulse velocity, you have a hysteresis, you go so at this point that you jump to the stable motion. <laughs> so this uh, this uh, simple model can explain why the oscillation can be sinusoidal because you have a circular limit cycle <laughs> or sotos like this sotos shepherd depending of the inertia of the roller. It explains also why the amplitude change with the input velocity because the uh, limit cycle, cycle increase and can decrease also but can, this size varies with the input velocity and uh, it shows it show also that uh, GI and GE for crack initiation That is, when you have, uh, for example, a sotus chapel oscillation like this, you have a GI for the beginning of crack propagation and a GE for crack arrest. They are related to the maximum, minimum, and the maximum of the cycle. And it shows that uh, this quantity uh, must not be confused with GC and G min which are material property. This quantity G for the initiation of the crack and the stop of the crack are related to the inertia of the system and are not material properties. It was a problem in fractal mechanics when you have fixed in, in fractors and uh, there is a confusion between with these quantities. Many people now think that G E G I and G E are not material properties. Uh, secondly, the fact uh, it is easy to show that uh, in a limit cycle, this limit cycle follow very is very near to the GV curve, and this is the reason of the the success of the first computation from the the time spent at the first branch, because in a limit cycle like this, most of the time the time is along the GV curves. Okay, uh, we know something about aluminum. In, uh, in your experiments on friction, did you look at the, uh, at the transfer from the substrate to your tip? Did you get transfer of material? Measurements with diamond point on the metal surface. 
can you indicate whether the friction is mainly due to the plowing of the metal or to interfacial effect? No, I think it's because of plowing. Huh? It was plowing. Because the, the, the point is very smooth. We have a track. So it's mainly a plowing turner. Yes, I suppose. Uh, does this mean that if you take your metal and study its deformation properties, you will find the same characteristics, say, of the yield stress as a function of rate of deformation yes. and temperature? Yes. And this is all because of the way in which the dislocations are yes. blocked by yes. the yes. atmosphere. Yes. So your friction measurement is a means really of revealing material properties in the metal. Yes, I suppose. I see. Okay. In the first part of your talk, towards the end, uh, you wrote down three equations which describe a low real system that would exhibit chaos. Could you tell us what they described? They were the equations of motion for the band, the roller, perhaps? Yes, it is an equation. There are equations regarding the, the angular velocity, the field angle, and uh, it was possible to reduce to three parameters. So a degree of three. Yes. Okay. It is necessary to have chaotic motion. That's correct. I was wondering about the coupling between different modes were, because if you have coupling between the modes, um, you would have a synchronization of frequencies, I believe. Yes. The, this is the reason why I said it's an exploratory experiment, because when we use the, the, the motor, the Cooper motor motor, the signal was found uh, noisy at the beginning. And the signal was filtered. It was not a good idea. And uh, in the second study, we have put the roller on a spring and measuring the deflection with the spring. But we have coupled oscillation at this time. And this, so I have not insisted. Uh, because it is more difficult to understand. So, if anybody tries to do uh, such an experiment, it is necessary to have a very stiff system to avoid coupling oscillation. Uh, Jacob Israelashvili, uh, in uh, analyzing your stick slip, you assume that the friction coefficient at some point decreases with increasing rate. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have any reason for making that assumption? Is that the only possible way of explaining your results? And, uh, and is there any direct experimental measurement for that? No, it is difficult to have uh, the value of the friction coefficient in the negative resistance branch. When the, condition, when the friction coefficient the 60 is uh, usually explained by a difference between Static friction and dynamic friction, with a static friction higher than the dynamic friction. And uh, I suppose if you look at the friction versus velocity, you have to study in logarithmic uh, diagrams to know to see if the coefficient, like for peeling, if you have a curve increasing and decreasing. But it is. Uh, difficult to measure the friction coefficient in the decreasing uh, branch because we have immediate mistake slip. It is unstable. And uh, as friction is, uh, uh, is a dissipation of energy in the, in the soups of us, and that we know only that uh, the, the dissipation decreases when the, the strength rate but we have not uh, direct observation of the variation of the friction condition. I'm Mark Robbins from Johns Hopkins. Uh, this is in some way a related question in that it, I, I think one way of getting at whether or not there is a negative branch and whether it's uh, 
really characteristic of the material is to look at the dependence of the mass. Your inertial term, for instance, if you vary the size of it, depending upon whether there is, say, a negative, well-defined negative term of some shape, or two branches, both with positive slope, which could also give stick slope, you'll see different behavior. Ah. Did, did you, for instance, vary the, inert, the mass of your roller? Because if you vary the mass, yes, we have not we have not varied we have not varied the mass of the roller. That is an experiment. That is one way of potentially exploring whether yes. or not there is a well-defined yes. negative region. It would be a very interesting experiment to do. We have not. Uh, let's see. The order. It must change the, the shape of the oscillation. I, I had a comment in support of what he had said, I believe. Um, we see again mathematically that if the friction force does not show an increase in velocity, then you will not have a stick step. The system will become stable. But if you have, if you must have that decrease, then you can have not a stable increase, you can cycle and perhaps chaotic behavior. I asked Robert another question. What you say is true, but is it the only way of explaining it? Only way we know for now. I don't know. Um, I guess I have a comment on that on, on that point. That is, if you like to refer your name. Oh. Um, I'm Karen McCullough from IBM. I just wanted to point out that one can also get sticks that um, if you're if your sample is uh, heterogeneous and the frictional force uh, varies across the sample surface, which is in fact the kind of thing we see with the force microscope in the very small scales. For example, I suppose that the undulation we have observed are something like this. Maybe crossing the grand boundary is something like this. I want to see in the stick slip phenomena the stiffness of the driving drive mechanism have a very important role here. If, how how do you think the stiffness of the drive mechanism is in your system? Yes, I agree with you. 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 Yes, I agree with you.
I mean. I have just discussed the two, two rod bifurcation mechanism of the slope. In the slope around the upper point with one, uh, one tag, you have this tag, you can have this oscillation appearing abruptly. And uh, if you have another rod bifurcation, the oscillation has to appear progressively. And we have observed that the oscillation appears abruptly in the last minute. Uh, it is the, the only assumption for the ozone was calculated. And uh, for the calculation of the frequency of oscillation, there is no uh, adjustable parameter. I see. Uh, did you, could you influence the parameter values to uh, control the chaotic part and uh, uh, the, the limit cycle behavior? You can change the limit cycle if uh, you change the velocity. Change the, uh, if you change the inertia, uh, or if you change the land with feedback, the three parameters are controlled. And although it wasn't really marked in your talk, uh, would it be appropriate to say a few words about the physical reasons for the negative branch to the uh, helium energy? Yes, I, I have not uh, spoken out. I suppose it was uh, it was known. It is a viscoelastic effect in peeling, and uh, it is well known that uh, in a viscoelastic, when the frequency uh, increases, if you if you look at the up prime and up second, the real and imaginary part of the young modulus. It is well known that uh, the imaginary part, the loss function, first increased and then decreased. And it is this decrease in the this negative resistance branch reflects the decrease of the losses with the with the frequency. And we can correlate the frequency with the velocity of the crab. Because if you assume you have a crab propagating to the in this direction, and if you look at some element of volumes just below the crab, if you have a crab like this running in this direction, if you look at some element of volumes like this, you, you, Uh, this element uh, only has more stress, and the stress increases as the crab approach, like this, and then decreases to zero. And you have a cycle of deformation, whose the duration is a function of the crab velocity, and the amplitude of the, the, the stress on this element of volume is a function of the stress, the theoretical stress here, sigma, to record, which is a function of the value. So the losses are a function of the velocity of the crack and a function of the surface energy of the pupillary energy of radiation. And when the velocity increased, the losses first increased and then decreased. So you have a positive and negative resistance branch. It is your answer to your question. I'm not too sure whether I agree with it, but it is an answer to my question. <laughs> uh, one, one more question. I have a comment. Uh, if you could just put that transparency. Professor Table made the point that the likelihood is that it will be subsurface plastic deformation, which was the source of the friction deformation. Well, that's the classic relationship for the coefficient of friction for a conic lidenta. It's geometrically similar. So it doesn't contain any material parameter. Yes. So it's, it's difficult to see that if you have introduced a change in the rheology or ductility of the material by changing the temperature and the strain of it, it would manifest itself in the friction coefficient. I could see that it would change the hardness when you've been doing the scratch hardness experiments. And I would be curious to know whether or not you have examined the wear tracks in the scratch 
to see whether there were discontinuities in the scratch harvest during the period of evolution. We have to go to the But you do see the difficulty that with the plastic deformation, that is, with the geometrically similar indenta, there is an obvious way for the friction coefficient to vary. But uh, the friction coefficient should affect the losses inside the uh, Yes, I agree, but the, it doesn't come into a first order analysis. Personally, I find it very interesting that whereas Professor Rabinovich at Panama Club this evening now, uh, apparently, uh, will be talking about many things, but including the effect of stiffness of the membrane apparatus. Uh, in contrast, it's, it's very interesting also that two of our speakers today, both Dr. Majis and Dr. Savakov, have been talking about the possibility of uh, a stick-slip phenomena that are intrinsic in the sense that they depend upon the, the properties of the material. So that will make a, an interesting contrast, I think, by, by the end of the day. Uh, let me just say generally that um, uh, most of, the, most of the lecturers are kindly putting up photocopies of their overheads on posters at the back, and uh, maybe they would be willing to do the same, so to put them on the boards, and, and poss possibly also, um, if we have one on this last point that was raised, the question of, uh, of how the strain energy release rate depends on the, on the crack velocity, and then um, anyone who's interested in these topics can pursue them at leisure with the lecturers between now and one of the discussion workshops. So if you're interested in doing that, keep your eye on these posters at the back. Brian Long's lecture is already